Yes. Okay. Now call to order the December 12th, 2022 meeting of the Board of Directors for the Kitsap Public Facilities District. It looks like our first order of business will be public comment. Is there any out there? Uh, there is. Let me, um, I'm going to promote, uh, or I'm going to allow uh, Mr. Anderson to speak. So hang on just a second. Mr. Anderson, go ahead. Oh, hi there, uh, Russ and the others. Uh, I'm a little confused on the start times for these meetings. One place that said six, another that said 6.30 for the January meeting. 6.30, is it going to be? No, Mr. Anderson, the uh, January meeting will be at 5.30. The reason why this meeting is at 6 o'clock is because we couldn't get into the chamber until six o'clock for the Bainbridge meeting, but I'll go back and double check if I put something online that's inaccurate for the start time for the January meeting, I will fix that, but it's at 5.30. Okay, so you'll be back at the uh, normal times. Correct. Uh, with only occasional exceptions. Correct. Um, and on the website, when I clicked on minutes for the special November meeting, it just comes up with the agenda for that meeting. Correct. Is that something that, that you'll put in place after uh, those minutes are approved? Tomorrow. Tomorrow it will. Okay. T tomorrow those minutes will. Uh, well, no, I take that back. I'm sorry. Um, I, ha I will have the meet the special meeting minutes to the board for approval in January, and then those meetings will, those minutes oh. will go up after that. Okay. Okay. That's quite a lag. And then just one question. I'm wondering how well your new office in Palsmo is uh, going for you. Uh, well, thanks for asking. Uh, I really enjoy it there. Uh, really nice uh, kind of central location there in Palsmo. Um, great, great place to meet. Public's welcome to come to the office at any time. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Carry on. Thank you. Hey, Russ. Hey, do we have any other public comment? Yeah, uh, Director Leadham, do you have a question? I just wanted to say I'm, I'm looking at the agenda for this evening, and it does say the January 30th meeting is at 6.30 on the bottom of the agenda. You're right. And, you know, I was just checking to see if Mr. Anderson was paying attention, and he was, so. <laughs> I will. Hey, Hank, good going. <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you. Okay. No other public comment? Okay, with that, we'll move on to the approval of the consent agenda. Do we have uh, any items that want to that need to be removed to discuss more? If not, if we can get a motion to approve them. Can I ask a question before we do that, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I didn't see in the consent agenda meeting minutes from our prior meeting. Is that still Which, an outstanding item? No, from it's the not. special meeting. Did we approve minutes at the special meeting? I don't remember. No, we didn't. The October twenty fourth should have been part of your consent agenda packet that I sent to you all. The meeting minutes for October twenty fourth. I just don't see it on tonight's agenda, so I was just calling oh, it off. You on know, you're, no, you're absolutely right. On this cover sheet, yeah, item A, item A should have been the October twenty second or t October twenty fourth. Uh, meeting minutes. I did send it to your packet. I just forgot to put it here. Again, I was checking to see if you were paying attention, Director. Yeah. Uh, Morrissey, and you did, so congratulations, sir. <laughs> so, I'd also uh, like to bring something up, uh, Director Hatchell. Uh, for the uh, two vouchers, uh, the one uh, item B under this consent agenda, 1B and 1C, in the breakout, uh, the paper at least had, and I don't see it in the packet here now, but had um, the perk as the uh, project that it was going to, and so I just wanted to make sure that we don't have that in the official records or official invoice or official minute. Do you see that? So 
you are, are you referring to the blanket voucher itself for what? Yeah, blanket voucher B uh, th number 37. 37 for the, the Port Orchard? Yeah, for Port Orchard. And then the same, uh, it's just a typo error um, on both of them for the Port Gamble Heritage Park uh, also says the uh, perk. Oh, it does within the packet itself? Yep. Man, I'll tell you mm -hmm. what. Okay. It must be a December. Yeah. yeah. So what I sent to you in the consent agenda you're saying was the perk? It does say perk in in on the voucher itself. It does. For the one twenty five, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. I will I will change the voucher. I don't know if we want to still go ahead and take a vote on it until I do that, but I, I can certainly change uh, the voucher. Let, let's pull it out I and think just we can take a vote on everything else and just remove that one item and vote on it at a different time yeah and it, well it sounds like both I, blanket vouchers need to be changed right because our is the blanket voucher i don't have it in front of me but within the consent agenda there's blanket voucher both of them say pulls Perk. events rec center at the top for project item but the attached invoices are correct so okay. I'd like to okay. just amend just, the consent agenda at this point, Mr. Chair, uh, to say that uh, we reflect the actual projects there. I don't think we need to pull them out. I would just okay. like to amend that so that we can do that and know that there's an amendment made. Yeah. I can yes, certainly um, do that. that sounds fine. So uh, at this point, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move to accept the consent agenda with the amendments proposed. Okay. Do we have a second? second? Okay, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor of accepting the extent agenda? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Any nays? No? Nope. Okay, the motion carries. The consent agenda is approved. And, and real quick for uh, the executive director. I switched to a different computer, so I'm going to log off this, and I'm in the waiting room on the other one. Can you bring me in as a panelist so okay. I can have video? Yes, just promoted you. Okay. As well as Mr. Thompson. And Ms. Rogers. Okay. Okay. And then okay. Mayor Patansu, can you hear us? So now? we are moving on to the uh, project financial update for the city of Port Orchard. That's correct. Mayor Patansu, can you hear us, sir? Yes, I can. And Jason Driver is in the audience. Okay. Uh, if, uh, or your attendees, and he's the uh, executive director for Kitsap Regional Library, and uh, he's seen these this this information, and I just want to uh, acknowledge. Jason, when he gets in here, and uh, uh, there he is. And uh, so Jason and I uh, have met last month, and uh, we had a very productive meeting. We have the library and the city have agreed in principle to the terms of how we're going to split the remaining money to be raised, provided that uh, uh, we can get some additional help from the PFD, which we're about to talk here, to you here about tonight. And we've also came to uh, agreements that our attorneys are working on the finer details on how we're going to uh, operate and share in the operating costs of the library. So, or, excuse me, the new, the new community event center, which half of is a, a new library. So I just wanted to introduce Jason, if you haven't met him, and that uh, we are working hand in hand uh, on this uh, fabulous new project, and uh, I just wanted to uh, have him acknowledged this evening. So, with that, uh, I will. Uh, so, you've probably uh, heard, or if you're following the media, that construction costs are going up uh, quite significantly. Uh, we got our first cost estimates from where we're at, at uh, back in November. And uh, we did some, uh, tried to do some value engineering work and, and looked at some various things. But uh, we've also projected the cost of this project out to 2026. 
And they're giving us a worst case scenario, I believe, of another 30% if the, if things continue in the manner they do. So if you look at the top of this document that I've shared with you, uh, that was our original cost estimates, you know, uh, five, six years ago when we uh, first came to the public facilities district. Uh, we felt it was going to be anywhere from 16 to $20 million. The commitment from the public facilities district and our ILA is $12 million. And the, what we were to have remaining for construction after I finished the design was 9.5 million. And the light, it was envisioned that the library and the city would share and uh, the cost of the $8 million uh, to, uh, for the remainder of the construction. As, as I shared the, we, in November, or excuse me, in October, we've got the first cost estimates for construction at $20 million. $20.6 million, and it's believed it could cost as much as twenty five point six in 2026, which leaves us with a funding gap of, of uh, $16 million. Um, if you could scroll down just a little bit. When I shared this with my city council, they asked some some very pointed questions that, I, that I'll also answer for you guys, because you may have similar questions. My goodness, why is this building costing nearly $1,000 a square foot? And uh, well, it the building alone is almost seven hundred dollars a square foot, and then we've got a beautiful waterfront site that you know has uh, additional requirements for for the foundation that uh, drives it up a little bit. But because we're government and we have prevailing wage and additional documentation requirements related to all of those things, because we're government. That that drives the additional cost to that nine hundred and seventy dollars a square foot. So that's the, the the answers to that question. Then we talked uh, internally about how could we reduce the cost of this project, and we really can't shrink the square footage because the library really needs ten thousand square feet, and, and uh, we need nearly that for a the community event center too. So we looked at how things we could cut out of the project, solar panels. And you remember the two pop-outs in the front and the back that um, were glass? We looked at those at one point as polycarbonate, but we didn't think that would be as durable. We could put a cheaper roof, a less expensive windows and sidings and floor coverings, but I'm experiencing that right now in our city hall that we're about to reskin. And if we did, we, if we did value engineers this down 20 years from now versus 30 or 40 years from now, we'd be putting a new roof, replacing our windows, just like we're doing at City Hall and replacing our siding. It, you know, it won't be less expensive. It will be far more than the $2 million we could potentially save uh, to, to redo those items in, in the future. So... Right, right now we stand at a total cost, counting the design of twenty eight point one million dollars, and the public facilities district can fund up to sixty six percent of that. And assuming that, that would be eighteen point five million dollars. And if we subtract out the soft costs to the land acquisition and the design costs, we come to a new con eligible construction amount of $16 million. So from, the, from there, oops, well, that's okay. So just a little too far there. Um, there we are, I lost, lost my, so with the construction, so now with the construction estimates at 25.6 and the eligible construction expense, uh, uh, the, the potentially the PFD could fund of $16 million, which is an increase of 6.5 million. That would leave the funding gap to be raised by the library and the city at $9.6 million. And in talking to Jason, that is really a stretch for the library. They're, they're committed to this, but that's really about as far as they go. So if we can't get some additional help from the public facilities district, we're probably uh, not going to be able to move forward uh, with, on this project because we're about at the, at the maximum we could raise at a local level. So if we can go to that next page, um, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, I come here with my hat in my hand asking for some additional funding, 
but I want to sh- demonstrate how much uh, the city is putting into this project. So I've talked to you a little bit about that. We're raising, rebuilding Bay Street, raising ba- Bay Street, at a cost of four point five million dollars. We we thought that we were going to be able to reuse the seawall in front of the building, and after we had it, an analysis done on it, it can't be reused. So we're going to need to build a new seawall. And there's a plaza on the front side of that that we're funding. There's also an Orchard Street Plaza. So you add all of those offsite inve- investments, the city is spending about $9.5 million. Add that to the uh, the the, fu- the construction ask piece that, to, that we're, we're committed to. Our investment in this would be $19.1 million. So I, I just want to just demonstrate that we've got a significant amount of skin in the game and and, uh, we're committed to do that. So our ask here tonight uh, is that the public facilities district consider funding 66% of the total project cost, which is estimated at this time is at 28.1 for an increase in funding of 6.5 million, uh, which would bring our construction total to $16 million. So I, when I talked to Russ about this, uh, we've been uh, talk, discussing, and, and your attorney and our attorney have been looking at a letter, potentially a letter of intent that, uh, and I, I know you won't take action on that tonight, but that could be at a future meeting. And uh, the, the letter of intent really uh, just kind of makes it, it makes us all aware where we're at today. We want to continue on with this project, but I just want to make sure that everybody's uh, still committed to the project. Um, and, and I'm hopeful that the estimates that they're giving us for the future um, aren't so uh, dramatic uh, in uh, in four, four more years out. So it's so a lot of information and I'm happy to answer questions. And I know I talk fast. Okay. Also, well, thank you very, very much. So I have one quick question before everyone else gets going. What is our total expenditure from the PFD when this is all said and done? Is it- if, I'm sorry about the, my uh, dog, dog there back in the back in the background, <laughs> but uh, um, it was on that spreadsheet. If we could, would go- it be the 16 or the 18.5? The 16 is the construction. Uh, what we're asking for for the construction financing, so it would be the eighteen five would be okay, the, the eighteen five. Okay, of Thank which two and a half million dollars of will have spent by the end of twenty twenty three. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I see Phil's got his hand raised. Yes. Thank you. Uh, what is your timing? When do you need to know our response by how emergent is this versus we still have a little bit of time. Uh, part of my concern, just as a general matter, is I think on uh, on the PERC project, that uh, they're coming back to us asking for a little bit more. All of the projects that we've funded, I'm sure, are also having similar cost overruns. And so I don't know that, you know, as, as a board, we can look at each individual one and say yay or nay without kind of probably globally budgeting for what's likely to be coming down the pipe for all of the projects that we funded. So I, I have a feeling this isn't going to be a quick response, but just mayor on your side, outside date, obviously you'd like to know tomorrow what we're doing, but mm-hmm. um, you know, when, when do you need to know this? But yeah, the sooner the better, but Russ and I had already discussed no sooner than your next meeting. Obviously, this is a lot of new information and you're correct. And, um, you know, you refer to this as cost overruns and that's typically when you're in construction and you have those. I mean, the, we're, our, we are, we're seeing escalation in the cost right. of, of materials. We, have, we haven't gotten to construction yet, but uh, so the, you know, the, um, to answer your question, the sooner the better, you know. I just felt obligated to come share this information with you. We're spending your money on design. And if you're, if there isn't an appetite to fund this project farther, uh, you know, and these additional costs, then I, I don't see a path forward and I want to see this pod project to fruition. We're, we're, uh, you know, the, what's happening in the construction world with materials is kind of something that's really beyond all of our controls. Right. And I, I think my only other comment is, I mean, I, I think your comment is well taken about 
if you do go forward with the project, you do it right. Don't do it with cheaper materials. I mean, you've got a beautiful location, a beautiful design. So it'd be a shame to have to scale it back and then, you know, end up with something much lesser than what we've all been kind of shown and what we're hoping for. So uh, hopefully it'll work. Okay. Mr. Chair. Do we have other questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would uh, like uh, two questions. One might be for our consultants, actually, uh, on uh, what we see uh, and if it's in congruence with the the mayor has to say about uh, continued increase in costs. Uh, I know as uh, somebody who has to pay that uh, in my personal line of business, uh, just getting trailers from Indiana here to Port Orchard uh, a year ago would cost about $3,000. Today costs $7,500 uh, for one unit. And so now uh, with gas prices coming back down, I have not seen any relief in any of those costs on my side. Uh, do we anticipate that into the future? Or um, are, are we going to be pretty congruent in uh, seeing these costs continue, but not seeing any type of relief. I don't know if that Shannon can answer that, Russ? Yes, go I, ahead, uh, Mr. I, Thompson. He had his hand raised. Yeah, so there was a couple of things that I have heard, and I can probably uh, help validate a little bit here. Um, um, so when he was talking about value engineering and, you know, not putting the solar panels on, the, you know, every building right now in the state of Washington has to be solar panel ready. And that is until July 1st, when the new code is adopted. And then not only do they have to be solar panel ready, you have to install the solar panels. Um, so um, I think it's wise to keep that money in your budget <laughs> because of the way the energy codes are going. Um, the second thing is, is that uh, building next to waterfront is always more expensive. The cost per square foot that I saw seemed really high. I just built a uh, 55,000 square foot academic building for the University of Washington. And and it, it it was about 980 a square foot, and it has engineering and a lot of big labs and, and things of that nature. But, um, you know, you're projecting forward. I certainly hope that we don't see that type of inflationary costs. I think we're all on that same page. Um, but uh, budgeting for the worst is probably the 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 the, the right path. Um, and then managing managing that budget to deliver a project, um, I think. Uh, so, um, there are many things that uh, that the market is doing. Um, gas prices, we, we, it's always fast to react with prices going up, and it's always slow to, to, to come back down. And unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. Um, I, uh, we are seeing construction materials, uh, certain materials coming down again, which is good to see, but we still are seeing shortages in the market. And it's really supply chain issues that we're dealing with a lot of now. Um, I can't get uh, uh, switch gear for these buildings right now. Um, I have a building that's due to be completed in um, June, but we can't get the switch gear till September. You know, um, so all of these types of things we're still chasing, and we're always reacting during construction, trying to 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 mitigate that for costs and for budget and for schedule. Um, so, I I think to answer your question, could I validate? Um, where where he's going yeah i think there are some concerns to the per, to the extent that that uh, is being projected you know that's that's a wild card um you know i i don't know that uh, any of us have that matte crystal ball that we could we could predict that so um okay and yeah if, I, I think oh, you're there and uh mayor patansu uh quick question uh in previous and john if i could follow up on that first and yep. yeah you're Shannon's absolutely correct. You know, we're we're planning for the worst case scenario, and we hope it's not that bad. I hope we don't see another thirty percent in four more years. But that's what our cost estimators are saying we need to plan for. And I'd rather plan for the worst and be prepared for it than being being having this conversation again in in uh, in four more years. And that it you know we said it was. Thought fifteen percent, and it really was thirty, and and now we're having this conversation again. And I'm trying to, I would try to, at all cost, avoid that. Uh, and I think Shannon kind of briefly touched on something that was my second question, which is for you, Mayor Patansu. 
Uh, in past discussions, we've talked about uh, right here the differences that are upcoming in some legislative changes, whereas if you get your permit in now, uh, you can save on some costs. Uh, it, I guess maybe that was where Phil's mind was going in his, when do you need to know that? When yeah. do you need to file for those permits so that we can yeah. save on those costs? Uh, and so when you need to have this answer. Yeah, we, we need to move forward quickly on our designs because we uh, our project and the bank's project are, are in planning on uh, applying before July 1st and vesting our permits under the current energy codes. Now, those laund a laundry list of things that we considered, we don't want to cut them out of the project because we don't think they, we believe that $2 million would it'd be foolish to uh, save $2 million in a 20, you know, $8 million building um, and then come back, you know, uh, and then that now, the, now the library and the city are responsible for replacing a roof and windows 20 years from now that are going to cost us far more than that, you know, that would be, and uh, we, we believe we'll need the solar panels anyway, the, our next round of grants that we intend to apply for uh, will work from the state, the library district in particular has a pot of dollars they can pursue. And I have uh, a funding source at the state that will require us to be LEED certified. Um, and so we just got the the, I just got the, the price tag for that. And it was, uh, it's going to be about $250,000 for the certification process on the front side. And then we get to uh, probably a similar number in the construction phase as we do all the documentation for that. So, but it'll be a requirement of our state funding to be lead silver at least. Is it possible to get a copy of the, their estimator's estimate? I'd like to see what the contingencies are that he's holding and what those markups look like and so on and sure. so forth. Sure, I can get that. I'll provide okay. it to Russ. No problem. Okay, do we have any more questions for... No. So we obviously have to talk to our financial people, Mayor. We'll do that as soon as we can so we can get you an answer and move on this. And I would assume it would happen pretty quick. So. Fair enough. I, I I knew you wouldn't be taking any action on this at least until January, and I did. But I uh, felt I owed it to you to come and talk to you and and pre present the challenge that we're faced with. Yeah, and like I said, we'll talk to our financial people probably in the next two weeks. Yep. So we should have something by January for you. Perfect. Okay. And I and I will get the cost estimate document uh, over to Russ uh, from Rice Fergus Miller. Okay, there's no further questions about this. We'll move on to the, uh, uh, see the uh, facility progress reports. No reports this month. Okay, I'll see we'll you guys later. See you next Yes, time. thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. We'll move on to new business, which is the uh, operating expenses and 977 project reimbursements. Yes, yeah, so uh, Mr. Chairman, this is to ratify the November uh, 2022 operating expenses and the project uh, vouchers for reimbursement. Um, since we did not hold a meeting in November, but me reaching out to each individual board member asking for their uh, approval to pay those operating expenses and reimbursements, and I received that, so those were handled we just need to ratify it at this meeting. So we would need a motion to ratify the November 2022 operating expenses. Correct. So made. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor of ratifying the November 2022 operating expenses? Aye. 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 Nays? No. And it passes. We'll move on to item B which is resolution 06-2022. And this is for the executive director to move into the PERS-2 system for the state retirement. We had discussed this at the last meeting. And the reason, and, 
the reason for the okay. resolution, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, talk over you, Chairman. Uh, the reason for the resolution is that uh, um, Washington State Department of Retirement Systems requires uh, that we submit a resolution saying that we have permission to enroll into the program. Okay, and if I remember, we already voted on this to approve you entering into the system, correct? That's correct. The resolution is a formality, but still something that we need to provide um, to uh, DRS. Okay, we'll need a motion to approve the resolution. Correct. Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt resolution 06-2022 as presented. Okay, a second. A second. Okay, is there any discussion? No discussion, all in favor of resolution 06-2022? Say aye. 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 Any nays? No. Okay, resolution 06-2022 carries. Now will move down to item C, which is resolution 07-2022, which is the meeting schedule for 2023 and we'll need a motion on this correct and let me just state that these are already uh, these are already set up I started back in October reaching out to the four different locations um, to reserve the space so these are uh, etched in stone if you will they're already reserved and in some cases we've already paid for um, to reserve the spots uh, to be able to do these meetings. So this is just, um, again, it's a resolution we have to do each year, uh, but these are, these are solid locations and dates. And these don't conflict with any holidays? The, uh, gen so I, I discovered that June 19th is actually Juneteenth, which is a holiday. So I'm working with the Kitsap County Administration Building to see if we could actually do it at that date or if we have to move it to the next week. My concern about the one on June the 27th is that I think that the uh, commissioners may be meeting at that same time. So June 19th is one that I will probably have to work on to get rescheduled at a different location or we may turn it into a Zoom meeting. Okay. Director we Hanchel, have to approve? Oh. Chairman Hanchel, I'd like to move that we adapt Resolution 07-2022. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, not directed to you, but I would just ask uh, that Russ put this on our calendars ASAP, as uh, I know mine's already beginning to fill up for 2023. Absolutely. Once it's approved, what I'll do tomorrow is I will send each one of you calendar invites so you've got it on your calendar. I would also okay. uh, want to make a comment for the June 19th uh, to move the date, even if we have to do a Zoom. Hopefully we can use the chambers still on a different date, but if that is going to be something that we as a nation re recognize, then we should, uh, then we should follow that. Sure, absolutely. Yes. That'll be easy enough for me to do. Uh, yeah. Training. And I don't want to have a county employee have to come in on their day off to open this up and set this up for us. So, all in favor of resolution, say aye. 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 Any nays? Nope, the resolution carries. And the, the next item will be the uh, IRLA with the city of Polsbo, the amendment. Correct. Do you this want to discuss this? Certainly. This is a, it's amendment number three to our original ILA um, with the uh, city of Polsbo. Miss um, uh, Botten can't make it to the meeting tonight, so I told her I could speak. Um, the changes that are made to this one are points of contact. Um, previously, the point of contact for the Public Facilities District was my predecessor, so it now lists me as that point of contact. And also for the City of Paulsbo, the point of contact was Miss Botten. The point of contact now in this amendment will be Mayor Erickson. 
Then the second change was to extend the agreement out one more year. Um, so we're coming up at the end of this year, and obviously they're not going to make it, so that extends it out one more year. And I believe those are the only two amendment changes. Uh, nothing else has changed as far as uh, the amount of money uh, that's being committed, so we're not making a money ILA change. Uh, you can see down here where it says city funding request, it's still at $243,900. Okay. And we will need a motion to approve the amendment to the ILA. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will approve, uh, or I would ask that we approve the amended uh, regional center interlocal agreement uh, between the public, facility, public facilities district and the city of Paulsbo. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on this? No discussion, all in favor, aye. 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 And Aye. any nays? No. Okay, the amendment to the ILA with City of Polsbo carries. Thank you, uh, Chairman Hatchell. So what I will do is I will put the seal on it tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. I'll put the signatures in place. I will send it over to the city because Polsbo City Council is meeting tomorrow evening, and they will be discussing the ILA. Then we'll get the signature from Mayor Erickson if it's passed by the City Council, and that will complete the ILA. Okay, thank you very much. And I believe and then we have one more new business. Correct, is which is the uh, 2023 budget. Yes. And Treasurer Draper, that's all yours. Yeah, let me talk a little bit about the uh, process that we use to come up with this uh, proposed budget for next year, 2023. Um, the executive board, uh, Chairman Hatchell and uh, uh, Tom Bullock and myself met with uh, Russ and we went over line item by line item by line item. And Russ ha had some, uh, intelligence for us as to why some things that he was aware of needed to go up, some things he expected to go down. Uh, in the aggregate, it went up uh, a little bit. Actually, uh, the executive board was uh, a little concerned about the uh, built-in inflation uh, that we're experiencing. So we actually uh, raised a few things uh, that uh, Russ had not suggested in, uh, in terms of his salary. Uh, uh, Chairman Hatchell uh, checked with the county to see what they were going to do on employee cost of living allowances for the upcoming year. It was two and a half percent. So we built that into the executive director's salary and it had a minor impact on uh, taxes and, be and benefits. So, uh, uh, you see the uh, proposed 2023 budget in front of you. It's up slightly from this year. A number of things uh, did did, uh, uh, did go down because of actual experience. So I would uh, ask for the board's approval of that proposed 2023 budget. Okay. Thank you for all your hard work on this budget, you and your committee. So do we have a motion to approve this budget? Can I just make one little note of a typo on uh, on it, just if that can get fixed, just for the posterity. Otherwise, I don't have an objection. Which is under the payroll expenses under Hella. It says health stipend. There's just a typo there. Hmm. Yeah, I can take care of that, uh, yes. Director Havers. Thank you. Okay. That, I, I'll move to approve. Hey, do we have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? None. All in favor of approving the 2023 budget? Aye. 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 And any, any nays? Nope. The 2023 budget is approved. 
And Chairman with that, Hatchel, we'll move down to the financial reports. Chairman Hatchel, Second. before we do that, could I point out something in the budget? Um, Absolutely. If, if you'll look down at the bottom line and you'll see what we budgeted for, um, what we budgeted for for 2022, and then what our actual expenditures were, we ended up with a net of $249.50. So we did not overspend or underspend our budget. We were just just dot on this year on this year's budget. Okay. That's excellent. Very good. And, and we, we, we thank uh, Executive Director Shiplett for his uh, astute financial management. Yes. And we can now move on to financial reports. Executive Director Shiplett would like to cover those. Certainly. Uh, these are both for the months of October and um, November of this year. Uh, I do not believe that uh, our accountant, let me just double check. I don't believe our accountant was able to join us this evening. Um, no, she wasn't. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and speak to them. Um, we typically run five financial reports uh, each month. I provide our accountant with uh, all the information with regard to our operating expenses, um, and then of course our project updates. So you can see that they're divided into the 286 fund, which is the debt service fund, the 968, which is our operating expenses, and 977, which is uh, our, uh, budget, our project um, invoices and our bottom lines. So the very first sheet is the uh, it's statement of financial, but this is the, um, um, the uh, a balance summary sheet. You can see down at the bottom what our total liabilities and equity is. Now, again, reminder, this is for October. The next sheet is the detailed balance, uh, uh, detailed balance report for October. Next is the PL summary report for October. And then PL detailed report for October. And hopefully, you all had a chance to take a look at this ahead of time. And then it's the same reports for November our balance summary report. And you'll also see some of these figures reflected when we talk about the uh, tracking report for the projects uh, invoices for 977. And then our detailed balance report. Our P&L summary report. And finally, our P&L detailed report. Russ, I had a, a question, and I don't think we we're going to have an answer to that. But if you'll scroll back up to the detailed balance report for November, sure. It just it had something I'd never seen before. Uh, one more page. Okay, right here. Uh -huh. So under equity, uh, third line item number <laughs> forty nine uses other than OP. I mean. I don't even, I mean, what's, what's the line item called again? Um, it's so it's in the equity department. So it'll go up about four or five lines. It's six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the two eighty six account. OK. Mm -hmm. And it's entitled forty nine uses other than OP. <laughs> I do and not I, know. <laughs> I, and all I can think about is I, I know Susan has told us that the, the county, when they're putting them together, has names on some of these accounts that are relevant to them. But I just thought, is this something we're, we're supposed to know that, what that is? I mean, it's a... Yeah, that's a good question. I will ask her about that tomorrow. And then in future reports, we'll have a better detail as to exactly what that line item is. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the financial report? Uh, I would just make an observation on the 977 uh, balance that you know, for some time now, 
we've basically been pay as you go to keep these projects going, and yet our 977 balance has remained relatively steady and, in fact, grown a little bit. So I think that's a very healthy financial sign. It is, and uh, we're able to, um, and we'll see it when we look at the sales tax uh, rebates for October and November, but you'll see that we're steadily uh, averaging about 200000 a month. No guarantee that's going to continue to stay that way. Um, and then our operating expenses have been minimal, so we've been able to maintain a pretty, steadil, pretty steady, uh, significant 100, 100K, and if not more, 130, 140K, um, into 977 each month. Uh, this isn't so much a, uh, a question, Director Shiplett, but, um, you know, we talk about 977 and the cash on hand and what we have on holding about $3.3 .3 million, and we keep talking about the projects and, and the funding that we have available and don't. I know in the upcoming months, and you and I have had it, but I just want to call it to the attention of the entire board, um, of, of where we're at, and there are going to be some people who are going to be asking for some funds uh, in the near term, and for the PFD that doesn't mean next month by any means, but maybe within the next year or two, um, some significant dollars. So um, I just want to call that out because we're going to have to have some conversations with some of our partners on who's going to be doing the bonding on some of these things and how these actual dollars uh, go to and from each one. So I know we've started that conversation, but I want to make sure that everyone's aware of that because uh, it's going to have significant impact uh, here real soon. Correct. Uh, this next month is going to be a critical month for the board on some major decisions to be made uh, at, for the projects that are all asking for significant amount of money and how it is that we're going to be able to do that, what we can afford to do and what we cannot afford to do, and so forth. So... Um, uh, I've been working really closely with our financial advisors and our bond council about what that will look like. I told them that they did not need to prepare to speak to that at this meeting, but uh, it will certainly be a major uh, topic of discussion in January. Yeah. Am I reading between the lines that it's going to be a long meeting in January? <laughs> the discussion will be... Okay. In January. I, I don't know if we'll have resolutions or LOIs in January, but yes. All right, next is the sales tax rebate revenue summary for October and November. And you can see that we've continued the trend of 200,000 plus each month, uh, 204, um, 071 in October, and then 208, 743 in November. Um, just looking at the November, uh, what our operating expenses were at 16436 what our debt service was, which was actually a little bit less, about 5000 less than what it typically is per month. It's uh, normally 66337 so it was down about 5000 um, But our net gain for November was 130926 Overall, uh, we've collected $2.1 million. I anticipate we'll be close to $2.3 million by the end of the year. Uh, and we're averaging monthly $191,989, so nearly $192,000. If you look at that compared to last year, we uh, averaged $178,785. So we are ahead of last year's pace. We have been uh, all year. Now, I, I think it's interesting because... Uh, one of the things I keep an eye on, I keep a pretty close eye on the stock market, and I am concerned about potential for a recession. And so I am trying to think about, okay, so what happens if we really start to see a dip in those numbers, and what is that going to do to be able to fund our, our projects as we go, especially as in the, in the pay, pay as we go type of setup that we have right now. So keeping a close eye on it, uh, obviously our financial advisors are as well. Any questions on the uh, November, uh, October, November sales tax rebate revenue summary? It just looks to me, just from a quick scan, that the two hundred and eight thousand for November is the highest number we've ever had. Correct. Uh, 
All right. If there's no other questions, I will go down to the. Uh, this may be really hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in there so I can just zoom in towards the bottom. What I've highlighted is both uh, November, which was already passed and you ratified that, the November uh, project invoices and then December project invoices. So what you see highlighted are for both months. Okay. So if we total up um, in 2022 for what we've paid into the uh, PERC project this year, I believe that, or no, I'm sorry, for the uh, Port Orchard Community Event Center. Uh, we have paid uh, 1,000. That's not accurate. I'm going to have to redo that total because that's not factored into these others. It's not 21,000. It's much more than that. Uh, paid to date, $1.9 million. Uh, you know what? I don't think I added those up right. I apologize. Do I have the right number? It says five twenty-one. I think you do. Have oh, the right okay. I'm sorry. Five hundred twenty-one thousand. I'm sorry. I, I I can't see it that well. Okay. Thank you. I thought I goofed up another form. Okay. So yeah, half a million dollars to uh, Port Orchard, uh, one point nine million dollars paid to date. Uh, remaining balance, uh, just over ten million dollars um, for the uh, Perk project. Uh, we approved an invoice in November for six hundred and twenty-eight or uh, six thousand two hundred and eighty-eight dollars. There was no invoice for December. So to date, we paid $36,000 this year for a total of $185,000 through the project. In the current ILA, there's 58881 left. Then for Port Gamble project, uh, you just approved to pay for December an invoice of $137,000. Uh, to date, or I mean, this year we paid $652,500. Uh, to date, we've paid 800, 804000 They have 892000 still as a remaining balance with our current ILA. One of the things, too, that I, I don't think we have mentioned yet, this is a good time to mention it, though, is that the county has asked for an additional $350,000. Um, if you'll remember a few months ago, they came to us and said that uh, it was going to cost an additional $700,000 seven hundred thousand dollars because of cost overruns they said that the county was willing to come up with half of that if we would pay the additional three hundred and fifty thousand dollars so that's something else that we're going to have to discuss in uh 2023 as to whether or not we feel like we're in a financial position to add an additional three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to that ila so just wanted to remind the board about that and then finally, no more invoices for November or December for the uh, Circuit in the Northwest. Um, we uh, paid over a million dollars this year. And uh, so all of those invoices have been paid. There will be no more, no more forthcoming invoices from Circuit of the Northwest. And we will continue to pay $144,000 each year over the course of the next nine years. And then what I Russ, did was... Russ, yes. Yes. I think you probably ought, you haven't paid them. You've approved them. You've only paid the one forty four. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We approve them for reimbursement. Yes. Thank you. And then trying to scroll over here. Um, there we go. And then I took the November and December totals. So a total of four hundred fifty nine thousand four ninety nine uh, that was approved for reimbursements. Cash available in the 966 fund. Now, when I say cash available, it, I just want to remind you, in 9, or 977, the 977 fund, we have that money that comes in that's invested, and then we have money that's set aside that's cash. And so since we've been doing a pay-as-we-go system, 
what I do is routinely move money from 977 invested over to cash so we have available cash to be able to pay uh, or to authorize those reimbursements. So in this case, uh, we have a cash balance now of $166,000 after the invoices that were approved uh, in November and December are taken care of. So I will then be going in January and moving more money over from our investment over back so we can plus up our cash balance. And then finally, all of the, uh, everything that was approved for reimbursements in 2022 totaled 100, uh, or $1.3 million. Total paid to date, we paid $3.6 million. Remaining balance on all outstanding um, Reimbursements eleven eleven million seven hundred seventy six thousand. Any questions on our project invoices? Our nine seventy seven funds. Okay. Well, thank you very much. As yes, we're moving on to item eight. Is ongoing business good to the order? We do have one item, and so I have here with me, and I will go give it to him in just a second. But uh, we have a certificate of appreciation to uh, Chairman Jagodinsky. It says, is recognized for six years of service as chairman of the Kitsap Public Facilities District Board of Directors. His leadership and dedication has been the driving force behind determining the district's direction and understanding its fiduciary responsibilities. It's signed by Chairman Hatchell, and it's actually dated August 22nd, 2022, but uh, this has been the first time we've been able to present it to him. But uh, Chairman Jaganiski, I cannot thank you enough for your leadership, uh, especially uh, this first year that I've been here. And uh, I certainly wish we could do more than just a certificate of appreciation, but I want to personally thank you. I agree completely. Uh, you've done an excellent, excellent job, and I wish we could reward you better than a certificate, but can't. So congratulations. It was great having you as the uh, chairman. Uh, thank you very much. We've got a great team, and uh, I think the PFD is is headed in great direction. So thanks, thank you very much for, for this certificate. I appreciate it, and for your kind words. Okay. So, so with that, like uh, the executive director said, we have a lot of work to do over the next month or month and a half with a lot of stuff coming up. So there will be a lot of work and we'll talk to our financial advisors and hopefully have something coming up. So with that, if there's nothing else, then we'll adjourn the meeting. Meeting is adjourned. Happy holidays. Thank you all. Happy Thank holidays. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Happy Enjoy, enjoy Christmas. Bye-bye.